Good morning, everyone. I wanted to take a few moments this morning just to go through some of the assignments that you're currently working on during week two, and most importantly, get you ready for your first major written assignment in this course, the abstract, which is due this Sunday. So let's take a look here at uh, the website and go through some of these things. The first thing I wanted to show you is the opening announcement before this smelly stuff hits the fan, because one of the things that you can do to really improve your performance in the course is to make sure your computer is up to performance in the course. And so I offer you some kind of simple, straightforward tips, very non-technical, uh, very easy to accomplish. And I promise you, if you do just the first five to six tips here and nothing else, that if you've never done them before, you'll see a real difference in your computer's performance. Some of these things are making sure that you clear your temporary files or your browser's cache, and I'll show you how to set that so that it's done automatically. Deleting freeware that came with your machine, especially the Norton and AOL and McAfee and all that uh, kind, of, kind of good stuff and all the games that came with it. Now, in terms of weekly maintenance, it is so important that you do these seven things at least once a week. It can really get ahead of you if you don't do it once a week. And these are built-in maintenance tools that your machine already comes with. Now, some of the other stuff that I talk about is maybe a bit more advanced and that has to do with killing startup processes that may be taking up computer resources that you don't know about. Uh, each time you load a program, like a real player, media player, for example, your computer, unless you disable it, from then on out, forever, will try to connect to real player's website and to run real player in the background of your computer. That takes up computer resources. And especially if you have children who are adding things to your computer, those kinds of startup processes can cause your boot up time to stretch out to three, four, five, ten minutes. And that's often what causes a really slow boot up whenever you first turn your computer on. Your machine shouldn't be taking more than 30 seconds, maybe one minute to be completely up and ready for you to use. So if you're having trouble with that, be sure to check your uh, startup processes. And then, of course, adding memory is one of the most important things that you can do uh, for your computer. Okay, enough said on that. Let's go over here and take a look at week two conference. And you have five threads to look at and to respond to in this week two conference. Let's take a look at the first one. The first one is read and respond. I want you to take a look at some background websites, some background advice on what an abstract is and how to write one. I have three websites up here. I want to direct your attention especially to number three, my alma mater, University of Mississippi, because it actually gives you a very good formula for writing your abstract. Let's scroll down here to, toward the very bottom, elements of an abstract R. Now, what I recommend that you do is to write down those five terms there. Background, aims, methods, results, and conclusion. Write down those five terms, number them one through five, and write one to two sentences about each of those background terms. Once you write one to two sentences, giving you about 10, 12 sentences, that will be your 250 word abstract. Go ahead and put those sentences together, <coughs> excuse me, with transition words, and you'll be in great shape. Check your grammar, grammar counts in this course a lot, and you'll be in really good shape. So I wanted to pass that hint along to you. I think uh, Ole Miss has done a good job in giving you a formula there. So that gives you a chance to kind of think about and talk about abstract 
I see about five people have responded so far, and that's excellent. And you can kind of find out that uh, everybody's in the same boat when it comes to writing these important abstracts. Now, the uh, next thread has to do with a bibliographic scavenger hunt. This is just to get you over into the library and to get you uh, to find those kinds of reference sources that work best for you. The hunt goes like this. There are a series of questions here, 23 of them. Each person chooses a question that has not yet been answered satisfactorily. And then you go and find the answer to that question and post your answer and be sure to change the title of your post from its original title, which is Group Exercise Bibliographic Scavenger Hunt, be sure to change it to the name of the question that you have answered. And be sure not to answer a question that has already been asked. Okay, so that's the second thread. Let's look here at the uh, group thread excuse me, a thread number three underneath the group thread. And this has to do with Google. Google is an outstanding tool. Google has made a huge difference in the way that we gather information, see information, and our ability to have information at our fingertips. There's no doubt about that. Google is a fantastic tool. You should be using it 16 times a day. But in this course, you are conducting scholarly research. And as a result, Google is a great tool to help maybe get you started in some aspects of that scholarly research. But Google is not the tool for scholarly research that you should be using. And the purpose of this thread is to show you technically some reasons why that is true. Google, regardless of what they call it, an algorithm for page rank, a secret formula for page rank, whatever they call it, Google is still all about popularity, and Google is still all about commercial websites gaming the system in, sort of, in order that they get a high Google rank. So as a scholar, you don't want to be participating in that kind of game. So that's what Google is, this Google thread is all about. Then uh, the next thread is Writer's Workout. If you go to your Writer's Workout locker by now, I will have or should have all of the exercises that uh, you need to work for this one week. And remember, you ha only have to do one to two exercises per week. And I will be going to your lockers to check to make sure that you have done that week's exercise. And for this week, the exercise has to do with active voice versus passive voice. And that's all that you have to do this week. And again, don't you don't have to email the results to me. I will come and look at them. I have an instructor's access to that website. And now the last thing. Your writing assignment this week is to write an abstract, 250 words, and provide an APA-style reference citation for this article right here. This article is attached to this last thread. I'll click on it. It should open up in a new uh, browser window in your PDF window. And the title of the article is Workplace Communication. And it is a look at the use of a Donald Trump show as a way to help teach some aspects of workplace communication. And it's what the apprentice teaches about communication skills. Now, you are to read this, ab this article and to write an abstract on it using the tools that I have shown to you in the earlier websites. And then turn in this abstract by the due date, which is October 12th, midnight on Sunday. That is when your abstract is due. Okay, so there's a brief little lecture and a brief little introduction uh, to this week's assignments. 